I talked to him about the method of installation, and he continues to this day to defend it. It's only screwed down with drywall screws, which is an absolute no. I'd sit in here all day long, and they wouldn't come. That's exactly where our cracks were, right across. We can see that. I had assumed that if there was a problem, they would stand by their work. I said, you know, I wouldn't have you guys put the roof on my doghouse. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Mike Holmes, on the money. Janet and Audrey have been living in the house now for many years, dealing with the same contractor that they've grown to trust. Obviously, they do some half-decent work. There's some retaining walls, some concrete in the front of the house, the back of the house, some minor work downstairs. So, of course, when they wanted to do a new tile floor in the kitchen, they knew who to call. We were very pleased with the work they had done. In fact, we had them come back and do more work at the back. So we didn't hesitate when we wanted the floor done to call them in and have them do it. I believe this weather's February. Unfortunately, this time, they did the floor wrong. Now, what bothers me more than anything is the price. 4500 bucks there in that area to do a new ceramic tile floor. Hello, Janet. Hi, nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you. Nice day we have, eh? Beautiful. That's an awful lot of money for about 120 square feet. That's a lot of money. So if you're going to charge that kind of money, you better give not only perfection, but happiness. We had them do a new floor and didn't get what we asked for. We got a quote and in, you know, in the contract and it said that they would remove the existing floor. The day he started, he was putting down the cement board and I said, that's not what we wanted. And he said, well, if he takes up the existing floor, it will damage the subfloor. And uh, I, I don't know why he wouldn't do it. He just had in his mind how he would do it. But he's arguing with them. He's telling them right out. I don't have to pull it up, but it's in the contract. Unfortunately, I didn't do anything at that point except let him proceed. Normally, we're used to seeing the grout crack, but in this mm -hmm. case, we're seeing the tiles crack. Hi, Audrey. Hi, how you Nice good? to see you good. again. Good. Oh, you have to call Well, it's, it's, it's a little damp outside, but your hands are warm. Oh, yeah, I know. You don't mind if I hold them for a while, do you? <laughs> <laughs> we noticed the first couple of cracks. Then we contacted the company, and the floor continued to crack over the nine months we had been dealing with them or trying to get some resolution to the point where a third of the tiles are cracked now. Now we have certain ways of applying the concrete board down and what I'm seeing in the cracks is that obviously it's falling in the sheets and we can see it directly running across the floor straight across and back again so that tells me this is one piece right here it's not bonding at the edge so as you walk you're snapping the tile. Now this is a ceramic I can tell by looking at it not a porcelain. Oh journey! <laughs> Hello! They came and uh, said they would fix it at the same time they um, convinced us to have some more work done, which uh, which was a countertop and everything. But when I saw the price of it at $5,400. Now you're getting dirty. Now you're starting to take from people that you shouldn't be taken from. 5400 for 10 linear feet of countertop. I felt like they were trying to pad it to, you know, get some money for doing the floor over again. So we canceled that. I could get expensive granite for less than that. They didn't even pull up the baseboard, which is not so bad. Normally, if we're going to do this and they're going to leave the baseboard, we'll tile it, we'll put down some corner around. And uh, the idea is, is that it finishes the floor to the trim, it looks good, we paint it, so we see, there's no painting whatsoever, we see massive grout on the edges, this is what we don't want to see, oh, see how it's cracked? cracked? See, this is cracked there, there is, see that's not even. See the, see the grubbing? It gets wider as it goes back. Mm. And meanwhile, I can tell they have a saw because I can see the cuts, mm -hmm. and they have a wet saw. I know, saw. I wasn't really happy with the quality. When he came to take pictures and see the floor, I questioned him on the, the method of installation as being the problem, and he defended that. Then I get a phone call and they said that it's the Joyce's have moved. At which point I thought, we're in some trouble here because <laughs> I think they're gonna blame us for this. This is something I'm starting to see way too often. Jobs are being done, there's a complaint, the contractors come back in and take a look, and what they say is, this is not our problem. There were only two options at that point, is to replace the floor or give us our money back. It's always somebody else's fault. We never got an answer from them until I finally filed the claim with the Better Business Bureau. I was very happy because it sounded from their end that things were going to speed up and happen. And basically the company did to them what they did to us and they didn't return calls and it was hard for them to uh, get answers from them. You know, I had a home inspector come in and look at the floor joists and I talked to a couple other contractors. So you really went in detail here? I did. I went. I had some, one come in and another one I just told what was happening and, and they feel that it's the way it was installed and there's nothing wrong with the floor joists. Their final answer was that they've done everything they can. They're not obliged because the warranty period was up. And that was the very first time I'd ever heard about any kind of warranty they never talked about a warranty oh so that's There's nothing in writing about okay. a warranty it's not on the contract so about last warranty. minute i'm sorry your warranty's oh, yeah. up yep. and the mediator got the boss the owner of the company to agree to come in and redo the floor and i said that's not acceptable 
because I don't want them back in. They, they said because I was a little old lady, they figured I was. They might have done that. Uh, for them. I would have taken them right, right <laughs> card because I mean I've been a credit manager for years and you don't fool around with me. So I basically said, so you're willing to come in and replace the floor and incur that expense, but you're not willing to settle financially. And I kind of talked him into agreeing to an amount to settle. For me, you know what? I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to show why it broke why it's not working, how it should have been done in the first place, and what we're going to do to fix it. If you don't do a good job, mm -hmm. then we'll we'll contact somebody and have you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'll accept that challenge. Okay. I can't believe these drywall screws. I never use drywall screws. I washed the floor yesterday. I don't very often get down on my hands and knees anymore because every time I do, I find another crack. And I found one just behind So it has nothing to do with you just, not being able to get down there. No. You just don't want to see it. I just don't want to see, don't it see the cracks anymore. <laughs> going to try and keep these, Mike? Yeah, I do. So let's start by just pulling down all the trim across the top. Okay. We'll separate them one piece by one piece. I'll save everything. All right. Give it to a reuse of Everything but the uh, tile on the floor. Because unfortunately, oh, that crap. sucks. Cabinets are designed to go from finished floor. So if you tile up to your cabinets, you'll never be able to put in a dishwasher underneath the countertop. It won't fit. It's designed to go from finished floor height to the bottom of the countertop. Okay, I got it from there. Thanks, thank you. Got that? Yeah. The walls are in fairly good shape. Normally, if they're real bad, you'll see me take them down, but they're in fairly good shape. Nothing that we can't fix up cosmetically. So when it comes down to it, new cabinets, new floor, inexpensive kitchen. So on an old counter, this is where you're going to see it rot across the bottom here. And we do see that you can see the water penetration that has hit this area here, but it's nowhere near as bad as I usually see where it's falling right apart. The back of the countertop caves in. That's when it tells you it's time for a new countertop, uh, sink, taps. And behind the wall here, we see a little bit of rot on the wall, which means water did come down, penetrate it. A little bit swollen in the wood down here. So bit by bit, it did leak and cause damage. We can see that at one time there was a new sink installed here because we do have copper and we've, we've now changed it to a yes, okay? Copper fitting, compression fitting over top. Somebody's even put some caulking on it because obviously it leaked. Well, it shows why. Whoever put it on didn't really do it right. See, again, it's the proper stuff. The quarter inch hardy board, which is a good product. There's nothing wrong with it. But they've laid it over two layers of linoleum and the old quarter inch looks like mahogany, which was designed to uh, put your linoleum on top. This will probably come up rather easy. Let's go take a look downstairs first. Portraits look pretty good. Everything looks good. Agree? I mean, there's nothing wrong with the structure. They yeah. blamed it on the structure. Go figure. Like, just, can anybody ever accept the blame? Oops, we made a mistake. Yeah. The board they're using is good board in the wrong procedure. So it's just done wrong. I would have put up plywood on this. It's right. just a smarter move. And then a Detroit, just way smarter move. Yeah. So this is a hardy board. It's actually a great product. Problem being, it's only screwed down with drywall screws, <laughs> which is an absolute no. Nothing adhered underneath it. Hit by the tile, eh? That shows how sharp the tile is. Medic, is that that little cutter or is that yeah, another one? That's, that's just from a little piece of tile, right in here. It shows how good that board is because it's really holding the tile tight. Had that board been bonded down, you'd have a hell of a time getting it up. Path right through the center down here. Okay. And then we will try and peel it up this way and this way. All right. That's exactly where our cracks were, right across. We can see that. And I said it would be the joint. That's precisely what it is. See, as this board is not bonded to this floor, which creates a floating floor. I mean, you see how well it's bonded. This is Rhino board. It's not Hardy board. Very similar product. Yeah. But it's a good board, it's just not adhered down. You were right on the money though with that seam. Well, it's everywhere. Yeah. So they are three by five sheets and it shows in the cracks. Right. So not bad for 15 minutes work. <laughs> and we should be done. That's right. So maybe what we should do is I'll throw you in my truck, we'll go down and put a construction boot on your foot and maybe I'll, I'll hold them and you can kick them in the butt. Is that a good idea? Would you I like to do, do that? that very easy. <laughs>
It's in great shape. You know, even this is usually the bad area where the big base cabinet is. You'll see that it's usually broken like crazy across here underneath just, just because of the cabinet water mm -hmm. penetration, it falls apart. But for what you have, I can easily fix this. As a matter of fact, I can fix it so good that all your imperfections you see, right. there's mm -hmm. a few of them. Yeah. I'll break them out and I'll patch them up and I'll use all the right products. Now, what did we find that the other contractors did? They used a great product, the Rhino board. It really is a good product, but mm -hmm. it's how you put it down. You mm -hmm. have to thin set it down with screws, but they use drywall screws. So drywall screws is a no. Not being bonded down. Had they bonded it down, your tiles wouldn't have cracked, your grout wasn't cracking, which tells me your floor is moving nice and equal. It's not mm -hmm. moving independent so much. There was enough on it that it was holding it tight, but because the Rhino board was not glued or adhered to the floor, it allowed movement, which snapped the tiles right at the joints of the three by five sheets. Oh, okay. I feel somewhat vindicated that uh, what I believed and what other people had told me had actually happened to the floor was the truth. No, they tried to pull a fast one on you. They didn't want to pull it up and do it again. Right. But to them, that's just more work. and. I guess if they can, you know, stall it off for a while, eventually you'll go away. I think they want you to stop calling them and they just try to wait you out. Well, I know now what exactly went wrong and that's good to know. At least I know that I was right somehow. <laughs> I think we'll keep with close to the same layout, a few changes, whether or not, ah, I'm not gonna say anymore, we'll just have to see. <laughs> okay. But you'll have to trust my judgment. I will make this very nice for you. I'm not gonna, you know, turn this into a piece of crap. I'm okay. gonna make it very nice. And your mom, besides, she's gonna test me, right? Well, she is, and she's gonna call me and say, so have you chosen anything yet? Has they been? I'll have to say, well, we have to trust them. I'm a little nervous about letting them go ahead and not seeing, especially with my mom. That's, <laughs> that's the first true. that's anyone's ever said to me, and if you don't do it right, <laughs> I'm gonna be phoning someone. I thought that was cute. Just the unknown, I think. You know, I don't know what he's gonna do, and I, I think color-wise and everything, I think he always does a nice job in the places that he fixes up, whether it's you know bathroom or kitchen or something. It always looks nice, so we'll see what happens. By tomorrow, you won't be allowed in, but we'll have a lot done by tomorrow. We'll okay. be working on the walls and the floor at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Don't worry. I think you're gonna like what we do. Thank you. Okay. I'm sure I will. We'll see you tomorrow. tomorrow. We'll just lean it up against the front of it, okay? Thanks, Pink. We are gonna run this way. We're gonna stagger our sheets right. so we can get going with hammering all the nails down. We're gonna okay. make sure I wanna add just a little bit more. So we'll add some PL Premium right across every board. Just a little nice yeah. little bead, right? Put down the plywood, screw it, make sure we leave that eighth of an inch gap in between our tongue and groove. You pick the tongue and groove? Yeah, yeah, TNG. So we got three inch for the joist, and we got two inch just to hold in between. Okay. If we glue it, we won't need the two inch, but it wouldn't hurt to throw in a couple. Yeah, okay. Just to nice, bring it up nice and tight so that glue gets in and sandwiches it in. Can you see that? Yeah, that's why we're gonna need a fellow strip on the end. Make a square bit of a pain for the countertop. Mm -hmm. Cabinets are easy on unsquare walls, it's the countertop. Right. How about the other one? This one wasn't as bad. A little bit of space in the corner, but it's, you know. That one's fine. Yeah. That's gonna be tight. Handle that. Down here, but. Oh, it's good. Just like. Well, we can see it was just standard. We had uh, approximately a nine foot counter here, sink in the center, a simple two foot island here, fridge and stove. Possible uh, ideas that I have really is, can we get a small island in here? You know, can we come off and just come across this way with a couple of bar stools? And do a little peninsula type of like Yeah, yeah. Okay, because yeah. it'll define it and give the area of the table over there. Sure. We don't have a lot of room, we're about nine feet wide, so it's not a lot, but if we came out with a little bit, it might work. If we do bring it over, we're probably looking at going to this end over here and that's, Probably as far as you want to get, considering Agreed. how much space we have. Well, you were thinking just a 12 inch depth? It's a very small depth. And if we put the stove back over here? Then we can get that full depth. Worst case scenario, would I have to move the stove from here over so we could open that door without an issue? You'd, still, you'd be okay. I think we'd pull the peninsula out far enough that we'd keep the stove approximately starting right here. You'd still be clear and for that opening of the door. A small, a small on little counter on the end. That's right. On the counter, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Do you mind drawing that up for me? No, oh, no problem. And Absolutely. we'll look at uh, types of cabinets. You brought in some doors for me? I did. I did. Let's take a look Thank at you, sir. colors. This is a, it's not cherry, is it? It's actually, it's a, it's a maple, but it's a cherry glaze finish. Okay. Beautiful color, it's actually one of our most popular ones. From the beginning, I like this one. That one just appeals to me, and I can put in a nice cream color tile, uh, a backsplash, bright color paint, it's really gonna enhance it and stand out. That's right. And work with a nice countertop to balance that color. Yeah, that works for me. It's not just tile on every home, it doesn't work that way. Get a sharp chisel, hit every single area. Okay. Peel it all back, chisel it off, any lumps in it, chisel it, chisel it. Hey, Ma, these are happy. Use your strength. <laughs> Hurry up. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, it's getting easier at least. Good. 
The fridge is not on its own? No, no, well, back in the day when these houses were built, it wasn't cold at that time uh, to have them on their own circuit. So as, as we turned off the refrigerator, as you notice, we lost these two lights also. Um, it's on a regular circuit. So all I'm gonna do is we'll make sure that it is on its own circuit now. You're going through the trouble of renovating. And this is the biggest problem that we find in every, you know, every home that we walk into and we're in there for something small and they'll tell us, well, don't worry about the kitchen, don't worry about checking it. We've already had it renovated a couple years ago. Well, yeah, okay, they renovated by putting new kitchen cabinets and they touched up the drywall and everything looks nice. What's behind your wall? You still have an ungrounded line or circuits that are not on their own. I guess what we're going to have to determine is what else is on the circuit. Yep. We do know we're going to need a new receptacle here, a new receptacle here, and a new receptacle directly over to Simon at the same height. Two pot lights right here, or even one. Even one. And we can end up coming straight up into the bulkhead and retrofit two pot lights. One thing's for sure, whenever you have old plastered walls, you want to use mesh tape because it just gives it a nice grid to bond to and helps it really keep it from cracking in the future. You can't just use paper tape. It's perfect for this application, but we can't have any lumps. You right. can't stand it. You, I don't know. I'll tell you one time I was teaching this guy years ago, someone I hired. Yeah. Uh, he put up so much of it that I looked at it afterwards and I went, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know you can't stand that? Oh, we can stand that. I said, go ahead, try. So he tries. Yeah. I handed him my belt sander and a mask. Right. I said, have fun. Good luck. <laughs> have fun. Right. I care more about the top side than I do the bottom. Sure, we hit everything. I always use two tries. One to hold, so it doesn't move. Okay. We'll finish trial later. The idea is the majority on the wall as fast as you can, so you can tool it properly. See, this will be, work really well. You have to look at how we're going to finish this, right? So if we take off any high point before it dries rock hard, we're now going to take our second coat and flare it right to here. So if this is the zone that needs to be repaired, we're actually going to triple that zone okay. and flare it and bring it out as much as we can. Otherwise, we're building out only this area, and that causes an issue. We oh, must that, flare it. After you paint nothing, easy everything. nothing is perfect. It's the illusion of how you create perfect. So the more we flare it out, the more we keep our true edge when okay. we tile. Tool it, and I'm going to take off all the edges. Just the high ridges. I'm going to sit one minute. Things like this, you can come in afterwards. We have to remember it's not okay. sandable. I'll just take it off, right? Okay. So we will tool it. Like all tooling it. It is now when it's not totally dry and it's rock hard. You bring it down to a nice flared. Now the thin set we use underneath this is a modified thin set. Modified inset means more adhesion, more glues. We are able to use it underneath because as long as we have one porous subject, which would be the sheeting in the floor we did, and one non-porous, which would be the bottom of the Ditra, the modified will bleed into the wood and help it dry fast. Now, if you were to use the modified on top of this to the tile, what we have is like two pieces of plastic. Neither one is porous. Modified means it's gonna take forever to dry, especially on an 18 by 18 inch tile. It won't dry, so don't do it. What you wanna make sure that you do is use a non-modified on top of this. So, with using the uh, non-modified, we want to make sure we butter the back of the tile. So we'll just do a quick little butter on the back, and this is just going to give us a bonding ability. If you try and go tight to the wall, there's no walls that are perfect. We are putting up a nice thick baseboard on this. I have the room to play. Let's use it. Just like that. Yep. Thank you. Now we're going to hold this nice and tight to the next tile. And I mean nice and tight, nice and gentle. Drop her in place. You see how close I am to the tile? Drop this in, give it a push, and then move it away. By doing this, we don't squeeze up the adhesive in between and have to clean it up later. A lot of tile guys that I see just mop the floor, slap them down, push, 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 squeezes up in between, they give it a quick wipe, but they don't clean it good enough. So when you grout it, you see the thin set. Now normally, the bigger the tile, the bigger the grout space you can have. But you really don't want to exceed about a quarter of an inch. I even hear a lot of people say, three eighths is easy, you can do three eighths. If you look at the spacing, this is a perfect spacing with the tile, with the right coordination of colored grout, such as a bone, an ivory, it's the perfect spacing. It's not just tile on every home, it doesn't work that way. What type of thin set to use? What type of flooring to use? In other words, a subfloor, do I have to build up the structure? Should I double sheet it? Uh, is the Dietra good enough? You really need to know these things. So for your average person who thinks they can tile, you better educate yourself. Someone get me a four foot level, please. Once again, Everybody's going to assume you have to be 100% level. That is incorrect. 100% true. It looks straight. It looks level. I care more about trueness than I do levelness. Why? What home is level? What walls are 100% level? So if you try and do everything on level, 
Could be an issue. You can look and see how it is, if anything is sticking out. And that simple leaning trues it up. I don't know what you're doing, putting them up. I'd say. Otherwise, you're going to put them up and go. <laughs> Why does it appear there's no set in <laughs> Filler strips, you really serve many purposes. One, if your doors are too close together and when they open up, it allows the space. The idea of a filler strip is to allow space in between cabinets, especially if we have unsquare corners, which we really do here. By adding a filler strip to the one side, it fixes that unsquare corner just as fast as that. But you should always have them for installation purposes because you never know when you're going to need them. And in this case, we need them. What I've done is the center one is catching strapping onto the wall, which is nice and tight. These guys here that I'm putting on the outside is catching plaster. Now, if you don't really overturn that screw, it will bite the plaster very well, and we should be able to damn near hang off this cabinet. Uh, I will go in the corner here. And what I'd like to do is catch it on a slight angle, but instead, again, I'll try to stay about the same distance away from the bottom, put it on a slight angle, and try and catch the one in the corner. And I did. For the corner here, we can see the chair. Now remember the doors, okay? We have a cherry gable, we have maple on the inside and a cherry end. So the doors will come right to the end. This allows this door here to open easily and not scrape off the wall. It sits perfectly here. This cherry piece here was unlevel to the wall. We've made it level. So we'll fix this little corner here with lipstick and mascara and a latex caulking, preferably. I don't want to use silicone unless I absolutely have to. Are we good? Looks good there, man. Just holds it incredible, yeah. right? Just incredible. Look at uh, that. Very nice. I think we know what we're doing. We're going to add a little bit of PL on the inside of this. And if you notice, I'm going to go closer to the inside of this because if we put it here, it'll squish out into the wall. Right. All right. Nice. So uh, let's get the clips, put the clips in, get the shelf boards in place. Okay. That way they're not sitting around so we can scratch them. I kind of like this because rather than having the dishwasher right against the wall, they have a six inch cabinet. So this six inch cabinet works to what is a solid door. It makes it look like drawers, although it's not. It opens up and it's perfect to slide the baking pans in the side. It also acts as a filler that comes off so the dishwasher is away from the wall against the side of the sink. It's absolutely perfect. Happy day. This is gable in for uh, beside the fridge. It's got to be 24 exactly. So what they do is they send it oversized in case you have to scribe the walls and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down to 24. That's what we need. So I got to get a nice straight edge on it. What we're trying to do with the tape here is uh, just stop it from chipping. Uh, sometimes the tape will just, you know, grab it in place and uh, it prevents it from lifting the uh, layers because it's basically just a laminate on this. 24 exactly. All right. Thanks, boys. The end gable is really the clean area for the fridge to go. It allows the upper cabinet to exceed past the wall cabinets, which are approximately here. You want your cabinet above the fridge to be deeper. This way you don't have to dig way back over the fridge as the fridge is in place the cabinets in front of you. So by tying the gable into the uh, side gable of the cabinet and then the cabinet to the wall secures everything nice and tight right at this point, as well as sitting on this area and back fine two studs makes it perfect. The bottom is a different story because right now it's free flowing, right? It's not attached to anything. So what we'll do is we'll get in the upper cabinet on this side. That way we can attach everything perfect, even secure it to the cabinet. Once the base goes in, it locks everything in place. I don't even have to worry about an L bracket on this. Because the base is also a 24 inch depth. It makes it perfect. Ties into the wall, ties into the base, strong. Right, the floor is on level. The cabinet's cock right. Triple check, double check, check, check. What we have is we have a duct shooting out across in between the floor joist outside the wall, and the uh, piece that ties into square duct work is off the elbow. I can completely feel it. It's just off. It's not like right on. So I'm just going to try and feed it into place with my one hand. If not, I'm going to punch a big hole in here, fix it completely. The problem being is once we try and put this vertical piece in, mm -hmm. and knock it off again. So what we're going to do is cut a hole. Okay. Well, this is not a surprise. No insulation around here. Somebody's played with this before, whether or not it's been disconnected. The good thing about this is now we're going to find out how to get into the attic. We're going to go up there, we're going to fix it from up there, and now we'll convert it to round instead of square. Okay. You know what we could do, Mike? Yeah, it is a five-inch line. It is? Oh, I was going to say we could send the new guy up there. See for real. But... 
Well, let's set him up there. Because he's the little one here. Yeah. Now we got to get some insulation up there because look at the breeze, of the, just airflow from it. here going out. Well, you can see a roof vent up there, can't you? Yeah. Man, the things we find day yeah. in and day out. We can continue uh, work with Dan and Matt to get in that cabinet, okay. get in the corner cabinets, get a filler strip on the inside edge. You're going up into the attic. You can have someone work with you. You're going to need snips. You're going to need tape. Bring up some uh, metal screws. What I need you to do is make sure whatever you do with all your apples that you bring it down and we have a five inch pipe and people can cut the pieces, pass them up, throw them over to you, as well as the insulation, stay up there until it's done. All I want is a line coming through about this height here. And I definitely want that piece screwed into the ductwork, okay? So it does not drop. Uh, from there, start insulating the void and working your way up, closing it off and drape over top of the pipe, okay? So we will insulate the pipe. Okay. Once that's done, clean your way back that you have no issues. Work your way out, get the uh, access back in place. Put everything back in, okay? okay. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta go up there. That's okay. I've already put in my time, okay? I put in my time. It's your turn. This is uh, very much like a fast food restaurant today. I want a cheeseburger and fries, please. Order up. Today is reveal day. It's finally here. This means reveal day when the appliances come in. So uh, very happy to be finishing this up. It's been a long haul. We've done some really late nights, but these people deserve everything they get. They're uh, some of the nicest people I've met yet. So they deserve all of this. I'm happy. Not a bad little, uh, like a maple stained cherry look. I like it. Since we're gonna hit the walls again, just take the tape off. Fine, hit the corner. You don't have to be too. I was doing fine, but I figured once you got here, you'd I'll just brush it. Because you know what? I'm, I'm just worried it's going to peel it off. Fresh paint. You know what? This is starting to look really good. We have the new fridge and stove outside that they don't know about, so that's going to be a surprise to them. I'll take their fridge and stove and give it to a family who needs it. We're going to be cutting trim. That's all right. I'm going to use brown caulking over here. We'll stow the doors in the room. We'll get the one at the last minute. I think this will work. This is what we're dealing with. It's flush here, mm -hmm. and we got quite an overhang here. So we just want to bring it back. You can see it's down a square down here. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can do your magic so here. All we'll do is uh, scrap this uh, yeah. edge. We'll mark it with the erasable marker, and that will bring this edge over, hang over a little bit more. Because okay. it looks about exactly what we need is that amount there. Is that right? And it should look more proportioned. Okay, that'd yeah. be great. Not bad at all. That's how I can fix that with a caulking pan. That's great, guys. Yeah, okay. Can't take any time at all. Make sure they're ones. Yeah. We're going to put these corner braces up underneath on the build up right here, through the build up and into the top of it. Okay, see, so that's fast. It's really nice through the build up into the top because the build up is just air stapled on, and this holds the top right down. I'm gonna put the rain shoot in. This here is the damper that will go up in the hole. Oh, and uh, all around there's this uh, seam where you there's two screws holding on. And what I like to do is take this foil tape and tape all the way around. Because when I put this underneath, I have no chance then to do that. So this is an absolute must as far as I'm concerned. You can eliminate a lot of airflow and make sure that your uh, rain shoot is gonna vent as uh, good as it possibly can, which is very important. Just uh, making sure that I have 30 inches, your typical uh, microwave range hood, or in this case, we're just going to do a nice range hood and then vent it uh, up top here. Matt, uh, our new apprentice, was nice enough to go up in the attic and take care of that. So all I got to do is uh, get my template here, cut a hole, and uh, duct up through here. That way the uh, range here will be properly ducted with the range hood. Every time we get down to the last day, for some strange reason, it always is just jam packed tighter. Go, go, go walking around each other like I'm gonna walk over him in a second. But when it comes down to it, we will get it done. We may work a little late. But it'll look damn good. That I can say. Strings in the sinks here just so we can mark the holes on them quick. Mark the holes for the kitchen faucet. Let's put the 
directly to the wall. We're going to stay flush with the maple, not the cherry, all right? Stay flush with the maple. Actually, even here is what I care about more than anything. I don't want to see that edge. Let's make this one come out with a finished cherry edge here so this one butts into it, okay? Okay. Yeah. Continue across, mitered corner there. On these cupboards here, we're just going to, again, one mitered joint straight across in. Same as that one. Contour cut that other one out to the outside edge because we're going to have one, two, three cuts on that one. I'm taking at least two more hours. Could be a late night. More likely with the minor little things. For lucky, two hours. We're unlucky, four hours. That's great, yeah. Do a little round in just these later. Yeah, exactly. If you can throw them in, we'll all adjust them at the end. Okay. Got the drill ready? <laughs> this has been a long, long day. And I want to say, you know what? We pulled off a miracle today. And another friend. Oh, did you? Very, very impressive. I'm going to go get you in at laundry. Come on up. I want to say, I'm sorry to keep you up late. That's all right, I'm always staying up late. What it takes, what it takes. I think you might like what we've done. Holy oh gosh. Crow. Oh my goodness. Oh, gee. Oh, I got a new shop. I got a new fridge. Oh. Oh, it's Wow, is this ever something? Oh, he took that crappy lamp down. Right down. <laughs> and and the the like, oh, look at that. Look at this. Dishwasher. What? There you go. Oh my! <laughs> thank you, guys. Do I do? Oh, do I ever? Mm, thank you so much. You know what? You're welcome. So oh. Every once in a while, I do a job that pays off so well for me in the end. Isn't that gorgeous? I wanted this island, and that was what I was trying to put together. That you had more counter space, got the island, and had a more usable workstation. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, we took your stove and moved it over a bit. I saw in my mind to put a bulkhead right around the room. Okay, and that just gave a little more character. This is something that's sort of my signature, but it's, it's to me, it gives a character. It is really unbelievable. Brand new stove, uh, fridge, dishwasher, uh, sink, tops, hood, uh, stainless steel hood. Nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. okay. Everything, wow. And look and at the space here. And a little here. bit of a different design here. I didn't even know we could have this. I didn't know there was enough room. No. Does it work? Isn't yeah, it, it does. Isn't There's that lots nice? of room. Oh, yes. I mean, what did we do? We did a small kitchen. It was a small job, but to see such a, a, a gracious face at the end, I love the job. I'm telling you. Oh, I can hardly wait to start. Want to stay for dinner? <laughs> she's a firecracker. If I have to say it that way, she's a firecracker. So, is my color coordination good? We got oh, some backsplash, nice porcelain yes, tile. Just beautiful. Oh, and you know what I like so much is having a outlet up here that I don't have to pull the fridge out. And then we brought Frank in to make sure that we oh, added and checked out your electrical. Look. Make sure that oh. we made sure you have a separate line now in your fridge. Oh, it's just. Uh, I can't believe this. And you have a couple lights above the side. I know, the hot nice. lights up There's there. your switch right there. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? And I'll oh tell my you. gosh. <gasps> Look at that. Oh. She was so amazed at the little things that we did that I thought were little. To her, were huge. Gee, what do you know? And they even roll nice and they don't wiggle from side to side. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, Mike. Oh my gosh. Peek a -boo. <laughs> Oh, isn't that nice? That's a good liquor cabinet. Is that ever gorgeous? Oh, I'm just all. Oh. Sure. <laughs> From a simple kitchen job to such a gracious ending where she grabbed me and kissed me five, six times. Even when I left the door, she grabbed me right by my cheeks and smuck me right on the lips. We also made sure that you were able to. Oh, for goodness sake, to me Just in case you have a shower in the kitchen. I can have a shower in the kitchen. That's the idea. Just in, just <laughs> in case. Because I can't have one in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, you can't have one in the bathroom? Don't well, make me well, get my tools. Well, we're going to have it. We're going to have it. I got to go fix your bathroom now? You know, sure. You're going to do it all over. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me happy. It's not the kissing. What makes me happy is, is the look on her face. The little things that we did made such a difference in her life. Oh, I just can't tell you how pleased I am. <laughs> well, I think you just did. I'm, you know what? I feel really good and I got goosebumps. That's where I smile. That's where my day is worth putting in everything I do. Such a small job to such a huge ending. Would have been so happy with just a new floor, but this is more than a new To me, this is on me. I just this is my pleasure and I my gift to you. I cry. Thank you so much. I really do. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. It's really fun. I tell you guys, it's... Hey, give me a hug. <laughs> give me a hug. You deserve it. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you You're so much. You're so welcome.
No, you're just gonna have to cook me a dinner. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> okay. That's a promise. That's my pay. Okay. That's a promise. Okay. okay. All okay. right. That's Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, Janet. Okay, thanks so much, Mike. Thank you, dear. I just appreciate it so much. I hope so much oh. you enjoy. Oh, and I look forward to this dinner. Oh, you get it. <laughs> now, this is the way it's supposed to be. The relationship, she tested me at the beginning. She said, if you don't do this job right, I'll be phoning and complaining on you. So have I passed? You're not... Oh, yeah, you're passed. I passed? <laughs> you're Because <laughs> I know you said if I didn't do a good job, you were going to be calling someone. Yeah, I was going to report you, wasn't I? Or something like that. Okay, now who are you going to report me to? Nobody. Nobody? Nobody. <laughs> Somebody challenged me that way, I'm going to step up to the plate. Now, it wasn't a lot of work. It was really easy. But to see that smile at the end... <sighs> I tell you. Oh. I'm cold. Like oh, you like it? Oh, oh, oh you're crying. crying. Oh. Oh. No. You could have gone up into one of the bedrooms for Pete's sake. Oh, that would have been nice, but for Pete's sake, you made a stand up. <laughs> yeah, you should have told me I would have killed him. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I tell you, I'm going to miss you all. Yeah, we're going to miss yeah, you too. I'm this was really fun to do, actually. I wish, I wish you could come every day. Yeah. <laughs> they tell me i got to work for another 10 years, so I don't know why I can't work for Mike Holmes. That's right. <laughs> you can work happy. for me anyway. Okay. That's anyway. a deal. Anyway. <laughs>